Hey, what's up everybody? This is Sam and welcome back to the Introducing Stackview series. In this part of the series, you're going to learn how to unleash the true power and potential of a stack view via nesting. And using this newfound knowledge, you're going to start building up some really quite complex layouts without ever having to touch auto layout constraints. Here's what the app will look like when you finish this part of the series. If you look at the sample app as it currently stands, you'll see there is just one label in this detail view and you're going to go ahead and create this really quite complex layout using a total of four, yes four, auto layout constraints. How cool is that? In the previous video you built your first stack view and you saw how they can be used to build layouts such as the one behind me. But this seems pretty simple and not really that powerful. We've been able to lay out views like this using auto layout and it's not really that difficult. So what's all the fuss about stack views? The real power comes when you realize that those red subviews, well, they could be stack views themselves. There's nothing to say that a stack view can't contain another stack view. I could take each of those red subviews, put a stack view in there and fill them with green subviews. Notice here that the axis is switching as well. Each stack view has its own set of properties. We've got a vertical stack view containing a set of horizontal stack views. I could continue ad nauseum. I could take one of those green ones and put a different stack view in that and then another stack view in there. You can start to see quite how easy it is to build up really quite complex layouts in this fashion. That previous slide might have seemed a little bit abstract, so let's apply some of that theory to the real world. The image behind me is the design that you're going to implement in this tutorial. You can imagine you got it from a designer or something. The trick with stack views is to establish which is the smallest possible component. Then, work out how to join that together with its siblings in a stack view. Once you've done that, you can treat that as a complete component and then work out how to stack that with the rest of the subviews, etc. Looking at the design behind me, you can see that the smallest elements are inside that yellow bar. You've got a price indicator, you've got a pancake stack, and you've got a button. Each of those has identical width. So you can draw those three and stack them as a horizontal stack view. Brilliant. Now that you've done that, you can start looking for how do I use that in the next level up of stack view? Now what you could do here is stack everything in a vertical stack view. The picture, the title, the yellow bar, the details label and the map. However, in a future video, you'll want to have the picture separate from the rest of the content to better, better handle rotation. Therefore, first identify the title, the yellow bar, the details label and the map. Take those four things and stack them. This time, you need a vertical axis and an alignment to fill, to stretch the subviews to fill the width of the stack view. Once you've done that, you can complete the last stack view, which includes the picture at the top. The final thing to do with this outer stack view is to add the auto layout constraints to pin it to the two edges and the top and the bottom. This is a representation of what you want the detail view controller to look like. However, open up the sample project and find the detail view controller in the storyboard and you'll see it's not quite there yet. All of the constituent parts have been added to the storyboard and linked, and this is to save time during this tutorial. Other than that, they've literally just been dragged from the object catalog and styled. As before, creating a stack view is best done by choosing your elements and then stacking them. And we work from the small elements all the way up to the big ones. So let's start with the three across the middle, the price indicator, the rating, 
and the Hide Details button. We want to put all of those three in a line across the screen. So select the three of them and then hit the Stack button down at the bottom. There you go, stack straight away. It's recognised that it should be horizontal, although obviously you can go in and change the axis to vertical should you want to and it will flip it around. Here we're going to stick with it horizontal. The alignment is centre, you could obviously choose top if you wanted, but we'll stick with the centre. And the distribution is fill, which means it will stretch one of the constituent subviews to fill the entire space. Now you want this stack view to have a yellow background. But if you remember back, stack view is a non-rendering UI view subclass. This means you can't set the background on it. It is there solely to organize the distribution, the layout of its subviews. Therefore, to get the effect of it having a background color, you need to place this stack view within another view. Handily, there's one already prepared that's the right color down here. So if we just drag that up into roughly the right place, and I'm going to grab the stack view and drop it inside that view. Also, if you remember stack views, you need to specify at least their position, if not their size, using auto layout constraints on their exterior. Here we're going to specify both. We want to pin it to this yellow view to make sure that they're always at identical size. We do that as ever using the pin menu down the bottom. We don't constrain to margins, that's good, and then we go through and set zero on each of these edges. No need to select that one. Add those four constraints. Immediately it's gone red. Interface Builder's a little bit angry with you. Don't worry about that right now. As we continue to work with the layout, we'll fix this. It's to do with the positioning of this yellow box. Our next stack view is vertical. It's going to include the title label, this yellow box, the details label, and the map view at the bottom. It's not going to include the image view, and that's for a reason that you'll see in a future video. So once again, I select those four, and I hit the stack button. We'll see what it does. So it's stacked it vertically, that's correct. However, it's got the alignment wrong. It's set it as trailing, so I want to change that to fill, actually. I want it to make sure that it stretches all of those subviews to match the entire width of the stack view. Distribution will leave us as fill for now. And our final stack view is going to include this new stack view and the image view. Once again, select the two and then hit stack. And whoa, that's created a massive picture. Don't worry about that, that's to do with the intrinsic size of this image. We're going to fix that by specifying the size of this outer stack view. Once again, we use the pin menu, and we're just going to pin it to all the sides. We don't want to constrain it to margins. We do want zero at the top, on the sides, and at the bottom. So this is going to pin it all the way to the view controller's view. This has resized it, but it's moved it off screen, so we can fix that with the auto layout fixing menu, this update frames. There we are, it's pulled it all in. That's, that's looking quite good. It's hand wavy, roughly correct. A few points to notice. First of all, this stack view is aligned over on the trailing edge and it's not the full width. Well, we want this stack view to be full width, full screen width. So if we select the stack view there, no, sorry, select the outer stack view and change the alignment to fill. There we go, that's now stretched that out nicely. Excellent. A couple of other things we need to do. We need to specify that the image is the thing which is going to get compressed. We've got this stack view that fills the entire screen, but we haven't said which of these things do we need to compress as we start to change the size. And we do that as ever. In the size inspector, we've selected the image. We just scroll down to the content compression resistance priority. Use the drop down list to say low. We don't want that to resist compression at all. That's now got rid of the angry red arrow. That's good couple more things to do. First of all, this very inner stack view, the distribution looks a bit weird because it's, man it's in order to fill the entire width, it's stretched the hide details button. You select it, you see it's very, very wide. That's not really what I want. We ideally want all of them to be the same width. We want this some kind of equal width and that is precisely, if I select that stack view, that's precisely what we can do with this distribution, fill equally. That means that every single component within that stack view will have the same width in this case, or height in a vertical stack view. 
And there we go. That's actually all you need to do to build this detail view. Let's run it up and see what it looks like. Perfect. That's looking really good. We've got nice nice spacing around things. We've got the image at the top as we expected and the, the map down at the bottom. That's it for this video tutorial. As ever, we like to leave you with a challenge. The challenge this time is to add a slight enhancement to the detail view controller you've been working with. You can see in the design behind me that there's an extra button inside that yellow bar. In order to achieve this, you need a new, nested, properly configured stack view. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thank you ever so much for watching. We'll see you next time.